I think artificial intelligence has a place with automation and understanding how things can make human life better. And I think that has given me some leadership insights as how intelligent people can work together and yes. how they always looking to break barriers. And as a leader, I feel one should try to break barriers. And that's when I got interested in kids and yoga and I thought it should be taught early. So I wrote a book on how yoga should be learned young with illustrations with a monkey and stuff. Hello everyone, today's podcast is very interesting and special to me because my very good friend and mentor Vasudha Badripal is on this podcast and she is a prolific marketing leader but what's more interesting is she's making a movie and she has brought in all her experience in marketing to write the screenplay for this movie. This is a movie about life, very creative, very novel. And she talks about how she went about writing this and how she is now looking to grow this effort. If you are interested in making movies, if you have experience in making movies and would love to be a part of this fascinating medium, please listen to the podcast all the way to the end. This podcast is definitely about marketing. It's about leadership, but also there are some very interesting nuggets about movie making and screenplay. So let's get started with the podcast. Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of Pitch Cafe podcast. This is a place where talent meets coffee. Today our talent is mercurial. That's the only word I can think about when I met her first at one of the networking events. I had read so much about her. I saw her name in every major networking event in the Silicon Valley and I always wondered what does it take for one person to be in the forefront of so many initiatives, whether it is the business world, the world of art, intercultural world, the world bridging the Indo-US economy, the world of artificial intelligence and the list goes on. So we have with us an extremely prolific marketing leader from Silicon Valley. Her marketing expertise scans several decades, but to me, she is a multifaceted, multi-talented woman leader who I look up to. Without further ado, let's bring on Vasudha Badri Paul. She is today one of the most sought after B2B and marketing sales leader, a revolutionary voice in AI platforms and AI platform companies. Her latest gig, Allen AI, was one of the startups I studied in depth for my own work. And for me, it's a, a dream come true moment. So Vasudha, welcome to Pitch Cafe podcast. Hi there, nice to be here and thank you for the wonderful introduction. You make me blush. <laughs> no way, there's a lot more to come. Thank you for being here, Vasudha. Uh, truly honored to have you here. So let's start with the first question. You know, you're from the B2B world. I cannot stop myself from asking, what were some of the most pivotal stories that defined you as a B2B marketing leader? This is where all the money is right now in the investments uh, landscape. So tell us, tell us about it. Pivotal moment is going to be a little hard for me because there was no, when I thought about this question, there was no one pivotal moment. I think it's a series of incremental uh, aha moments that have moved me on. Initially, it is very tough to break into marketing. Let me make no bones about it. Marketing is extremely competitive and it's a service to an organization. I see it. It's a service to the product. There's a creator who creates the product and then you provide the amplification for that product. Getting into the uh, marketing world was tough, but you learned the ropes. And there were a series of small pivotal moments, if you call it that. But I think the fact that I moved from one industry to another, to another, to another, and was fearless in jumping industries and not, you know, trying to say that I got to stay in this industry, but this is all I know. So mm -hmm. I always have been a learner. So moving from one industry to another helped me learn different uh, not only different technologies, but different aspects of marketing. So for it's not cookie cutter anymore, right? For this product, 
you don't sell it like you did an IoT product. I mean, for um, a healthcare uh, digital, yeah. you don't sell it like uh, it's not um, a networking product. So yeah. then learning came, brought about many revelations of how marketing cannot be cookie cutter and has to be very tuned to the product and the market you're selling. So the product market fit is very critical for the product, but it's also for the marketer, through the eyes of the marketer, they should know exactly what they're marketing and who the audience is they're marketing to. And that came quickly to me because of the series of career moves I made earlier on. So tell us now, now that you said you moved across so many verticals, I really want to get to the bottom of it. What is your hypothesis of a successful career in marketing, you know, the nuts and bolts. What is some career advice you wish you had got early on? Because you said it came easy to you. Now, what were those things? What were the nuts and bolts? The nuts and bolts are, um, some of this is going to sound preachy. I mean, the preachy thing is you have to be constantly learning. Marketing is not static. You have to move with the technology, the industry. Everything is moving so fast these days. I mean, whether it's now the new metaverse, a few years ago it was the IoT, and then it's the AI. I mean, things are constantly in motion. So you have to be a consistent learner and don't be afraid to learn. That's one, that's the preachy part. The second thing is you have to connect the dots. So if you move from one industry to another or you stay in the same company, please keep connecting the dots. Some learning you did in maybe some other area can be connected to the, you know, to an applicant, can be applied in this instance. So you have to keep an open mind. I think that's critical for a marketer. And then your networking skills and your people skills really come into play. I don't think Silicon Valley uh, has the best people skills. People have the best people skills because it's so technology focused, right? It's not about building yeah. relationships, but yeah. really, I think marketing, not only have to understand the product and the market, you really have to navigate to people and take your ego off a little bit. And, make those connections and make those relationships work. That's a pretty strong and valuable lesson I uh, get from a marketing leader, which is interesting. So you're full of surprises. Now, this one is a very important lesson and a surprise to me. I'll bear that in mind. But building on that thought, what were some of the lessons you learned in marketing, uh, especially when you worked with AI startups? I, I know AI is a very tricky domain and there was also this pandemic when you were working in your last AI startup, is there something we can learn from you or what you learned uh, through this? Yeah. I won't speak too much about that. AI is a new, it's one of the new things, right? It's artificial intelligence and there are pros and cons about it. I'm not sure AI is something that is very close to my heart because what about real intelligence, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about yeah. human intelligence and emotional intelligence? Yeah, I so feel the same. The kinds of artificial intelligence, you know, there's, you know, what about the human race? It, it worries a lot of people. Yeah. But having said that, I think artificial intelligence has a place with automation and understanding how things can make human life better. I think yeah. that's where artificial intelligence should go. Um, Having stepped into artificial intelligence, I think every industry is stepping into it. Their AI models, which are still, I think, un everything is really being refined and I think defined. I don't think AI is in the place where it should be. Yeah. And maybe it never will be. It's a buzzword. I think there is some credibility to it. Uh, but let's see what, what the future holds for us. Let's hope we intelligent and use human intelligence to let artificial intelligence help us, not destroy us. Yeah, and, and for me, uh, the energy and sustainability issues, they're always like a major concern. When sustainability frameworks get decided, AI is the first industry uh, they, it's gonna get picked on because it's extremely energy inefficient running these massive algorithms and maintaining this hardware, the carbon footprint it, it uh, is taking is humongous. So, so anyway, let's hold that thought there. You know, I, I've been looking at your profile and I know that you've, you've been a strong leader in uh, large corporations and also in startups. So uh, you must be having some leadership lessons. You talked about people, you talked about the ability to learn, but being a leader is a whole different ball game. And I know you don't like it if I say woman leader, but I, I want to ask that as a woman leader, it doesn't seem to be a problem for you at all. So tell us what is the secret sauce of your leadership in startups and corporations as a woman? You know, what, what is it?
I'm a woman, but I'm also firstly I'm a human, right? So <laughs> yes. I don't see myself with that gender. You know, gender is the capability of the person. It's the innate capacity each one has been given to lead, right? And there are different leadership styles. My leadership style is more. Um, I'm empathetic. I try to understand the person first and then lead uh, according to the nature of the person. So I come down to the level of the person I am, who is my employee, and then I lead. Not to say that I'm lenient, but I have. Uh, I think I have lofty goals for each person because I want them them to shine. So I think for, as a leader, you have to empower your people. You have to pick the right people, and even if it's not the exact right person, you could always train them, right? As long yeah. as they're open. So yeah. don't be hasty about you know dismissing people or. Uh, getting, making sure you have the best, best employee that you're hiring. You can train them if they're open. So the attitude of the person and the inherent intelligence really makes a difference. And I've always stayed true to that. Yeah, uh, that's been my leadership style. Make them shine, make them learn, make them grow, and they will be very loyal to you. Yeah, and they will want to make you successful because they feel that you have their back and you look after them in a way, right? Yeah, so that's they, been my leadership. Yeah, your ease and comfort uh, with this, uh, you know, this whole philosophy is just uh, shows that how successful you've been with this, and it has really, really worked for you. But yeah, it's a hard, a hard leadership style. Yeah. It's a hard leadership style, but that's not to say the people above me have the same leadership style, right? Yes, I have yes. very harsh environments where the leadership style has been uh, do as I say or just me, you know. And that's been hard for me, and that's in those environments I typically leave. Yeah. So, uh, Vasudha, do you want to share a couple of lessons you learned during your marketing? Like things didn't go well, and you managed it, or something you learned, like with real examples. Is there something you want to say? Don't have to name the company, but yeah. Earlier, I think there's not a big lesson to be learned. I mean, you have to find out what your style is and who you are. Always find out who you are first. You got to. You have to know who you are as a person, as a human or a woman, and then uh, when you're in environments that doesn't suit your personality, honestly, you stay there only for a certain time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to drag it on so much. There's only so much corrections and adjustments you can make as a human, or, and then in the end, you know, it's the exit door. So you have to make sure the culture and you fit. I think that's so critical. Otherwise, you won't have longevity in that company. Yeah, this is uh, such a practical advice. Most people don't follow. They follow the paycheck. They don't follow this uh, particular insight, and uh, they, it affects their happiness and performance. It becomes a vicious kind of cycle. So yeah, so you have to like this paycheck can come from somewhere else, or you can do without a paycheck. Most of us can do without a few months here, or there. No, it's not. A, it's not going to change our life dramatically, or you can down me. You can downsize your living style. I think ultimately you have to be happy or reasonably happy where you are, and you have to find a good fit. Just like this product market fit, this yeah. you fit in a certain company or you're not. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. So that is some really good career advice. In addition to all the advice in marketing you've given, so kudos to you. But hey, I have. Uh, one question which I've been asking, uh, wanting to ask for a long time. I love uh, working for nonprofits, and I want to ask you: What are some of your learnings from nonprofit world? You you've been so pivotal at Thai. You work at IIT startups Bay Area, like the hottest spot for <laughs> startups here. And uh, you know, were there any patterns you observed that helped you in your own journey as a leader? Um, especially IIT startups, it's been a joy to work with them. I am a volunteer purely, right? But then the ecosystem is so intelligent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so intelligent. And they're breaking so many barriers and almost it seems like natural to them. Yeah. And, uh, and I was pleasantly surprised by some of them are still humble or they didn't tell maybe not that humble, but they're just nice. Some of them are really nice folks. So I think that has been like a lot of learning from being part as volunteer with them. I write their newsletter. Um, I just enjoy to work with them. And I think that has given me some leadership insights as how intelligent people can work together and yes. how they always looking to break barriers. And as a leader, I feel one should try to break barriers. 
yeah and uh, you know there was this list of uh, immigrant founders in uh, who had two unicorns and there were so many iit f- star- startup founders in the list and i was like wow what is uh, what's your uh, secrets so i get some from you here and also i think people like you are giving them an ecosystem which makes them shine which is your leadership style which is coming across uh, very nicely here so uh, on that note on that learning i want to ask one of the most important question in this podcast today who is vasuda who is this person the woman behind your aura and what is the one thing which you want to tell your audience is your essence conveys your complete essence Let's know this is a very difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always a little bit of an enigma to ourselves. We all think we know ourselves, but there's always the hidden, like this is an enigma. You know, you'll be surprised. So what is Vasudha is constantly evolving, I think. At the core, I think I'm a kind person. I'm a humane person. I, I believe in humanity. And I think there's a promise. I'm an optimist, so I believe in humanity. And I think things will always work out. More than that, I think that we are all given innate skills. And I'm constantly trying to use the skills that someone has given me. You call it the creator, whoever. Mm-hmm. But I call it the creator has given me. And I think that's uh, an essence of who I am, that I, I try to be uh, multifaceted because those are the talents I've been given. And I feel it's a shame if you don't use your talents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw your I was re- reading through about you and uh, you've written a book on yoga. Gosh, how did that happen? And you've also written so many uh, news articles like, like Silicon yeah. Air yeah. and you've, re- you've written for uh, other journals like for the IIT Startup Bay Area new newsletters. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. And are you making a movie? Did I hear that rumor somewhere? <laughs> so, tell us tell us all about that. So that goes back to my philosophy, right? That we are all given certain gifts and we should use them. So uncover your gifts. You're not just a career woman. I mean, you're a mom. That's a beautiful part of my my life. I'm a mom to a 17-year-old daughter. I'm a wife. But there's more to you than that, right? And you're in this journey only for so long as Vasudha. And then you, you're born, you die, right? So within that journey, use your skills and uncover your skills. So yes, I have found the time to use my skills. I love writing. I am a very creative soul, actually. So I love writing. So I found time to write in journals. If people ask me, write about this event, and they send me to event, I'll write about it. And then uh, the yoga book. Yeah, I've learned yoga since 10 from a very famous yoga teacher in Bangalore. Can you name uh, your yoga teacher? Uh, Mrs. Raman, I think her first name was Sudha. She's no longer. But mm-hmm. her husband was a very famous astrologer in Bangalore. And he has the astrology magazine. Mm-hmm. But his wife was, uh, before the era of social media, she was a pretty reputed yoga teacher, very strict. She would beat me with a little stick if I didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> but Sudha, at the age of 60, at that point, when she taught me, I was barely in my teens. She would bend backwards completely and touch her. Okay. Touch wow. the ground. So she was very agile. Mm-hmm. And um, I learned through her and I learned through a few different masters, like Australian masters. And I embodied that very young. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, in business, you have to be more practical. So that went off at a tangent. But just before COVID, I was teaching kids in elementary school yoga when my daughter was in elementary school. After school, and that's when I got interested in kids and yoga. And I thought it should be taught early. So I wrote a book on how yoga should be learned young with illustrations with a monkey and stuff. And I did most of that myself. And it's on Amazon. Oh, my God. I'll definitely check it out. This is so cool. Yeah. Like somebody who can write a book on yoga for kids with uh, interesting illustrations and metaphors. That's truly amazing. And Vasudha, I've met you in person. I must say you have that spiritual aura. You've, you've got that charisma on your face. And uh, I, I've been wanting to dig deeper. I could, I dig as deep as I could, but now I know where it comes from. So do you want to share how that affected your corporate life, that spiritual energy from yoga? Did, uh, it, did it affect you in, in a positive way? Yes and no. I think um, it did, but <laughs> it did probably in the long run it did. But in the short run, it was like uh, being kind and giving. Sometimes people take and they don't give you back. And I realized that it's a mix. Yoga doesn't mean just being kind and giving. Yoga also means being clever, right? And you have to learn when to give and when not to give. (laughs) 
yeah. and that's a practical street smart purse that i had to learn a little bit and i think yoga helped me overall but things didn't affect me as much because i always felt yeah. it's, it's karma right? it'll come back to me when something bad happened to me it's okay i mean in the end it's all good right yeah uh, that philosophy helped me through but it's didn't it's not that i ha- i didn't have any bad knocks i had several bad knocks early in my career yeah and uh, th- that's what uh, has made you so grounded and uh, you know so strong the woman you are the way you come across one of the other uh, passions i've uh, started pursuing is uh, movie scripting mm-hmm. and it, during covid i was thinking of writing a novel because i was shut down at home it was boring but then that novel suddenly pivoted and i said no it just an aha moment it's got to be a screenplay so i learned how to write a screenplay uh, wow. there was a, there's a movie i really like called big fish and then he has exposed his whole screenplay in the internet you can google it and his whole screenplay is there it's mm-hmm. public domain so mm-hmm. i read it and i said this is like let me learn from him and i started writing a whole screenplay and the movie exploded i mean the idea exploded mm-hmm. it's about a rickshaw in india and about the passengers in a rickshaw just to give you a sneak introduction and then i wrote the screenplay i got a professional screen writer to polish it up i i've got a, a professional movie director and producer interested but i'm at a stage where i'm fundraising for it it could be a small budget but hey that's what i've thrown out to the universe i need a little budget to start this movie awesome so you reveal the most well kept uh, uh, secret all the way in the end <laughs> so this is so exciting you know uh, i'm in the content world and i do a lot of marketing and this movie making skill it is so handy it is just so handy what it gives you in marketing the tools to communicate is just incredible i can't wait to watch the movie please keep us posted and we'll definitely want to watch it with that uh, since we know all about your work and you know you're active in the marketing side you're you're reinventing your career what are some of the professional engagements you're involved in or people can work with you on Yeah, with the impending recession, I think uh, I've also put some thought to what I want to do next. A lot of startups are approaching me for work, like helping them with marketing, with even VC connections for funding. A lot of startups, as in the startup scene, is blossoming in India, right? Especially in Bangalore, my hometown. Absolutely. So I've had a lot of connections. Especially, I'm very grateful to the IIT community. They have yeah. actually brought me in, though I'm not from IIT. and uh, they've brought me in as part of their team and mm-hmm. a lot of iitians are doing this for startups in bangalore and elsewhere in india like helping them connect and get them like the third wheel of a startup like startups do not have enough money to get all the resources and you know they also in need of funding so this whole team i'm working with now is helping startups succeed and i'm part of the ecosystem So fantastic. So if they reach you if it's a startup who needs help with marketing then you will help them with the ecosystem is that right? Yes, um uh, a little I'm going a little bit beyond marketing yes marketing but also helping them connect with other pieces of the puzzle they might need because this yeah. whole team does other things like yeah. fundraising and IT help. So if they need help a little beyond marketing plus of course if I'm also working directly with some startups Um, I see. So, do, do you have a qualifying criteria? Like, should they have certain uh, annual in uh, ARR, or uh, do should they have the uh, product ready? Or what is your criteria? How yeah, minimally, I don't ARR. I'm not worried about this. But minimally viable product, a product that's interesting to me. It just cannot be just another product, right? It has to have yeah. some legs to stand on. An interesting product doesn't have to be like something that's breaking the barriers, mm-hmm. but interesting enough for me to engage in it and help them out. and uh, this should be in b2b right the b2b yeah, enterprise i don't know i've done a little bit of b2c but b2b is what excites me all right all right all you guys who are building amazing products uh, in your startup in the b2b space the enterprise space please reach out to wasuda badri paul she has a great track record and and connections both in the corporate startup world here in silicon valley and in bangalore So with that a uh, very reluctantly I want to bring this amazing amazing podcast to an end Vasudha any last thoughts before we wrap up the podcast No I think in marketing is an interesting field you know it's like any field has got pluses and minuses but it is strategic and you actually have to have a lot of thinking going on in the background when you're in marketing it's no cookie cutter approach works for marketing 
So yeah. don't, marketing is a common word and many people use it. Yes. But really good marketing, you have to have a good product and yeah. you have to really know how to reach the hearts and the minds of the audience. And that takes a lot of skill and a lot of due diligence. So on that very important note, all you guys who are struggling with marketing, uh, listen to every word she said very carefully and make it a part of your marketing routine. On that note, we wrap up this amazing podcast on Pitch Cafe. Thank you, Vasudha, for gracing the show. We're really grateful and we'd love to have you back. And you're an amazing interviewer. Thank you for this. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah.